the anime adaptation of the One Punch Man manga was simply mediocre and remained pretty faithful to it. But there are some small differences between the two. Things like new added content or scenes and even small details and the fact that the anime is well um, animated. Today I'm going to be going over those differences and compare them and give you my thoughts on them and all that good stuff. But before we begin I'm specifically going to be going over the second season of the One Punch Man anime and the manga chapters that cover them. So that means 12 episodes and chapters 38 through 84. I'm also going to let you guys guys know right now that I like both the anime, mainly season 1, and the manga, so I just wanted to make that clear. And to make this as simple as possible, I'm gonna go episode by episode, and I'm also not gonna point out every single small detail, because the video would probably be way too long. So that's enough of that, and let's get right into episode 1 of season 2. Episode 1 of the anime starts us off with an anime only scene. We see Genos and Saitama taking a stroll looking for their next hot pot ingredients where they encounter a toy shop where they see King. Shortly afterwards we see a monster attacking a group of civilians and we get a few little extra shots of the civilians panicking. And just as the monster is about to attack a civilian, King shows up and puts a stop to him by using his King engine. And there's a few manga panels that were cut from the anime and those manga panels were just little extra dialogue from the civilians talking about King and his King engine. After King successfully scares off the monster, in the manga we see the civilians praising King and surrounding him, but in the anime it just shows a shot of the skyline. Shortly afterwards, King buys a brand new video game and in the anime it shows him pulling the video game out of a paper bag, whereas in the manga he just simply has it in his hand. It's just a little attention to detail that the animators put in. We get a shot in the anime of King saying how he's ready for the sequel, that he's been waiting on for three years just to play, where in the manga he says the same thing but we get a close up of his face with a smirk, where it is in the anime we just see a close up of his eye. And this is a trend that the anime does where they cut off a lot of these cool close up panel shots of the characters faces and replace them with these weirder closer shots of them in the anime. Later on we see King encounter another monster that is a robot who unsheaths his sword and points it towards King with the force of the sword pushing away his hat and in the anime they add a little extra scene of his hat actually flying away. We then see Saitama and Genos hiding behind a sign looking at King getting confronted by the robot monster but the shot in the manga is just a little bit different because in the manga they're both hiding behind a pole where you could only see their heads peeking out which is kind of funny and I don't know why they didn't replicate the same thing in the anime. King then runs away from the robot monster and hides in a public restroom and in the anime it plays out the same but we just get a few little extra shots of the restroom room and King panicking. King eventually stops hiding and ends up making a run for it and in the manga the shot is just a little bit different where we can see him running through the city but in the anime you can see him running through the park. We then get an anime only shot of distant explosions caused by Genos and the monster fighting. We then get an anime only close up of King saying that someone else is fighting the monster. While Genos fights G4 the robot monster we see King make it to his apartment and immediately boot up the game and he also gets a few extra dialogue in the manga that was cut from the anime. And in the anime we see him interact in the video game just a little bit more than the manga and as Saitama sneaks up on King, King starts to panic in his head and he slowly starts to realize that he outranks Saitama in which in the anime we actually get just an extra shot of him and Saitama. We then cut back to the fight between G4 and Genos in which where the anime just gives a little bit extra love and they add a little few extra scenes compared to the manga. It then cuts back to King's apartment where we see Saitama and King playing the game together and in the anime uh, his room looks a little bit less messier and we also see Saitama's groceries right beside him and just as Saitama is about to leave we see the giant bird monster heading towards King's apartment in which where Saitama actually stops the bird monster from crashing into King's apartment and in the manga the bird monster actually looks way bigger compared to the anime the manga just does a really good job emphasizing the size of that bird bird monster compared to the apartment building. And just as King is panicking about the bird monster, he gets flashbacks of when monsters attacked him and how Saitama would go in and save him every time he would get attacked by those monsters. In the manga it shows a couple panel shots of King running away from those monsters whereas in the anime we get a few animated scenes of Saitama coming in to save King from a few monsters that weren't shown in the manga. And 
just as King realizes that Saitama was the one to always come in and save King from the monsters that he encountered, the anime actually does a really good job and I think an even better job than the manga of this shot of Saitama transitioning from when he had hair to the present moment. Saitama then leaves King's apartment after telling him that he might come over to play some more video games, where it then suddenly cuts to Dr. Kuseno's lab and in the anime we just get a little few extra shots around his lab. It then cuts to the Hero Association headquarters where we see Sitch gather up a bunch of criminals in hopes that they would work with the Hero Association to prevent the great prophecy that Shibabawa had about the dangers to come. We then get introduced to the 3A class heroes that are bodyguarding Sitch where we get introduced to them and their title cards individually whereas in the manga they're kind of just standing together and they get their title card at the bottom. We also get a quick cut of Shibabawa in the anime that wasn't in the manga and a couple extra shots of Sonic interrupting the meeting in which where he throws the papers around that were given to him. We also then get introduced to Fubuki and her Blizzard group a lot earlier in the anime because in the manga we see her three chapters later. The anime combines both Speedo Sound Sonics and Fubuki's quest to look for Saitama where in the manga it just continues on with Garo's introduction in the Hero Association meeting with Sitch but in the anime that is replaced with a scene of Saitama and King playing a co-op video game which is also in the manga just in chapter 42 but they add a little anime only gag scene of Saitama breaking King's controller. We then get an end credit scene of Garo being introduced and teased and in the manga I'm not gonna lie to you he looks way more excited in the manga compared to the anime about the great prophecy of Shibabawa and not only that but uh it's replaced with a close shot of Garo's face it looks kind of awkward I'm not gonna lie to you it looks a little bit more menacing in the manga. Episode 2 starts off with the A-class bodyguards calling the criminals a waste of time and a waste of cash where one of the criminals gets offended and tries to attack one of the A-class heroes but quickly gets put down. We then see Garo interrupt the conversation in which where he introduces himself and tries to get everyone in the room to gang up on him. A lot of the panel shots in the manga were changed up in the anime with some more awkward clothes close-up shots and a lot of the intimidating really cool shots of Garo were cut out and of course they changed up some of the dialogue as well where Garo says it's time to conduct evil and let's make this a slaughter party where they completely cut out time to conduct evil which is one of Garo's more iconic lines. Sitch then gets the three A-class bodyguards to gang up on Garo. Garo quickly takes care of two A-class heroes with the anime giving it a little bit extra love and right after Garo takes care of the last A-class hero blue fire he explains why his tricks of using the flames are kind of whack in the anime but in the manga we don't really get that explanation and it cuts back to sitch calling for medics and all the heroes to come in for backup to take care of garo and we get some extra shots of garo in the manga that were cut from the anime and in the anime we get an extra scene of blue fire getting slammed into the wall brutally and a couple extra shots of the criminals trying to gang up on garo and in the manga sitch looks a little bit more horrified than than he does and he's seen taking a more fetal position. Later on just as Fubuki approaches Saitama's apartment we get a little bit of an extra anime only shots of the inside of Saitama's apartment. As Geno leaves to go investigate the presence he felt we see Fubuki come to Saitama's apartment and just as she's about to newbie crush Saitama, Saitama quickly retaliates and gets into a fight with Fubuki and this panel shot of Saitama confronting her about newbie crushing and keeping her rank and looking down upon heroes. It's a little bit more closer in the anime I should say. And after her fight gets interrupted by Sonic and Genos, she appears to be a little bit more hurt in the anime, whereas in the manga, she just gets up from it like it was kind of nothing. And when Genos sees Fubuki on the ground, he says that trying to newbie crush Saitama has backfired on her, all that while saying it with a smirk on his face and with a little goofy look, whereas in the anime, he looks a little bit more serious. We then get to see the fight between Genos and Sonic, and just as Sonic is about to attack Genos, Genos suddenly collapses and the same thing happens in the manga but in the manga it makes it look a little bit less awkward because in the anime it's just a really close-up shot and just as Saitama challenges Sonic to a fight he quickly defeats him using some consecutive side hops serious consecutive side hops I should say Sonic also says what the fuck in the anime but uh, he's super surprised by it and in the manga he kind of just says random shit <laughs> and as Sonic is incapacitated on the ground Genos asks if he's dead but in the manga 
but he doesn't ask. He actually just states that he's finally dead with the little goofy face of his just looking down upon Sonic. I don't know why they changed it. I, these, these little goofy faces from Genos are kind of funny. After that, Fubuki states that Saitama isn't normal and that he's too strong. And in the anime, there's an extra shot of Saitama dramatically looking down on Sonic or looking ahead. The anime continues just as the manga does. And while Fubuki explains her backstory about her sister and herself in Saitama's apartment, we get a few shots of his apartment again. We also get an anime only close up shot of Saitama reading a manga. It then cuts to a group of civilians running away from a monster that Amai Mask quickly takes care of. And in the anime, they add a little bit of few extra shots along with the extra shots of the civilians that weren't in the manga. It then cuts to a scene of King showing up to Saitama's apartment to ask for his game back, where Fubuki is surprised and caught off guard by this. We also get an anime only scene of Saitama looking for the game under his table. And in this episode's end credit scene, we see the Hero Association executives have a meeting about the nicknames for the heroes, in which we see Sitch get really frustrated about because the executives are not taking the Garo situation seriously, and the anime adds extra shots of Sitch walking around the halls of the Hero Association headquarters, where he expresses his frustration about the meeting. And the episode ends off with Garo beating up an A-class hero, Tank Top Vegetarian, in which where he also gets extra dialogue and a couple extra scenes of him getting beat up. Episode 3 starts off with an anime only shot of Bang's dojo, in which where Bang gives Tronco a good beating. We also get a few extra shots of the dojo just like this sign right here and Chironko's foot and then cuts to a scene where Chironko goes to Saitama's apartment to tell the group about Bang's strange behavior. In the manga he's wearing more casual clothing with the flannel on and as we're in the manga he's still wearing his dojo clothes. Genos then proceeds to tell Chironko that it may have something to do with Garo and as he says that Chironko has a surprised look on his face as we get an anime only scene where Bang is dramatically looking overhead. Shortly after that we get another anime only scene of Chironko walking in the woods at night where he tells himself he needs to stop Garo. When Garo confronts Moomin Rider, Garo starts off by asking him if he's a hero but in the manga he doesn't ask him and just simply states that he's a hero and that he's here to hunt him along with a cool close up shot that wasn't in the anime. They are then suddenly cut off and interrupted by Tank Top Vegetarian and his Tank Top group in which where Garo quickly takes care of him again and they cut off a panel shot of Garo standing over Tank Top Vegetarian with his fist. Garo then suddenly tries to attack the rest of the Tank Top group where he is quickly punched in the face by Tank Top Master and in the anime they actually show Garo getting punched in the face whereas in the manga you can simply just see the impact of him getting punched. We also get an anime only close up shot of Garo's face getting super excited about taking on an S class hero. The whole fight between Garo and Tank Top Master gets a little bit of extra love in the anime with some extra added scenes. And after Garo defeats Tank Top Master, he goes in and defeats the rest of the group, violently beating them up. And in an anime only scene, Chironko overhears all of this going on and builds up the courage to finally attack Garo. From here, the anime follows the manga pretty closely up until we get to the Hero Association hospital scene, in which where we see Saitama putting bananas on all of the patients like Moomin Rider and Tank Top Master, which is pretty hilarious because a lot of them are close up shots that weren't in the manga. And when Saitama speaks to Tank Top Master about the fight between him and Garo, Tank Top states that Garo is much more different and is able to easily defeat humans. And as he's explaining all that, we get flashbacks of some familiar foes from the past. Not only that, but they foreshadow and give you a tease to Garo's future monster form, which wasn't in the anime. Shortly afterwards, we get the scene where Garo meets Terio for the first time, in which where Garo asks if he can borrow the hero catalog for a week to learn about the heroes and monsters, and we also get a tease about Royal Ripper, which obviously wasn't shown in the anime. It then cuts back to a scene between Saitama and Chironko in the Hero Association Hospital, in which where Saitama asks to fight a strong martial artist. Chironko just tells him to ask Master Bang, but then says that it would be rude because he is a complete amateur and that he needs to learn the basics first. And in the manga, it plays out the same, but Chironko isn't as bandaged up and you can actually see some flashbacks of Chironko learning the basics. And just as Saitama is about to leave the room, Chironko hands him the ticket to enter the Super Fight Tournament. And as Chironko is explaining to him how he can't enter the tournament impersonating someone else, Saitama just hears 
hears him but it goes out the other ear and you get some hilarious close up shots that are in the anime of him just simply staring and ignoring Charanko. Shortly afterwards it cuts to a scene of Garo confronting class A hero Golden Ball at a restaurant. Garo slices Golden Ball's beer in half and we get some dialogue cut between Golden Ball and the chef. We then get the fight between Golden Ball and Garo but not only that Spring Mustachio also shows up to fight Garo in which where Garo ends up defeating both of these guys. But before Garo ends up leaving the scene, Golden Ball tells him if he can seriously think he can still keep going with hero hunting in which Garo responds by flipping off Golden Ball. But in the anime this was changed to a thumbs down gesture. This probably had something to do with like the censorship and airing time in Japan or something like that. I'm not exactly sure but uh, honestly they should have kept it in. Episode 4 starts off with a flashback of a young Garo watching a TV show called Just This Man. And in the anime, this scene is just extended just by a little bit at the end, where Garo proclaims he'll be the strongest monster. And shortly after that, we get a scene of Garo waking up from his injuries that he received last night from Saitama. And in the anime, we get a few little extra scenes of the crows and the surrounding area. Shortly afterwards, we get the scene with the executives at the Hero Association headquarters discussing about Garo and the people he's targeting. We also get a few extra close-up shots of the executives and of course, we also see the hologram of the director that Garo punched. And when the Hero Association call up King to be a bodyguard for some of the executives of the Hero Association, he tells him that he can't because he's busy defeating monsters, aka defeating monsters on the video game. And in the manga, it actually shows the video game that he's playing. Shortly afterwards, we get a close-up shot of the sushi restaurant that Waganma and Rinki are eating at. And we also get the title card for Metal Bad and at a weirder angle too. And as they're eating at the restaurant, there are some extra scenes that were added in the anime, just like this one when Waganma mentions the medium fatty tuna. Metal Bat is then interrupted by a phone call from his little sister, and while he takes some time to step away to answer the call, two monsters come in and immediately start kidnapping Waganma. And we get an extra close up scene of Metal Bat spitting on his bat, gripping it, and getting ready to take on these two monsters. Not gonna lie, that's pretty freaky out of my boy. We then cut to an anime only scene where we see Saitama arrive at the stadium where the Super Fight Tournament is held and shortly after Sourface and Saitama meet for the first time, it cuts to an anime only scene between Charanko and Moomin Rider at the top of the Hero Association Hospital where they discuss about being an acquaintance with Saitama. Shortly after that, Sourface tells Saitama that the person who was pretending to be Wolfman in the last Super Fight tournament was none other than Garo himself and in the manga, they show this really cool panel that wasn't shown in the anime. And shortly after that scene, we then cut to another anime only scene between Garo and Terio meeting once again. This time Garo asks to borrow the book again. But Terio does not want to give him the book and insists on them reading it together. It then cuts back to another anime only scene between Charanko and Moomin Rider still on top of the Hero Association Hospital in which where Charanko expresses his concerns about Saitama being a complete amateur who might get himself killed in which Moomin Rider tells him not to worry because he's a hero and in another anime only scene it cuts back to Saitama waiting in his locker room reading a manga and having a hard time staying awake and waiting for the tournament to begin. We then come back to Metal Bat and his duty to protect both Norinki and Waganma and after he successfully defeated both monsters he then has to take on Senior Centipede and after successfully beating Senior Centipede it then cuts to another anime only seen back at the Hero Association HQ. We see staff members Busho and Jinzurin talk about the threat to come that being Elder Centipede. Metal Bat then orders B class hero pineapple and C class hero mochikan to take narinki and waganma to safety while he occupies elder centipede and in this episode's anime only and credit scene we see suryu riz up for a lack of a better term two girls on their way to go watch the super fight tournament episode 5 starts at the hero association headquarters where we see staff working and evaluating the threat of elder centipede and not only
only that, but more emergency alerts coming from all over the city. And the same happens in the manga, but everyone just seems more on edge and seems to be panicking a lot more in the anime. We then cut back to both A-Class and B-Class here, Mochikan and Pineapple, where they see something distant in the sky, that being Metal Knight. And in the manga, you can actually see Mochikan and Pineapple looking up at the sky pointing. And as both heroes watch on as Metal Knight takes on Elder Centipede, Metal Knight then lands on the ground to tell both the heroes to keep on running. And this plays out just a little bit differently in the anime because in the anime, he's still in the air flying and battling Elder Centipede. We then cut to the fight between Garo and Metal Bat, in which where not a lot really gets changed, but I feel like the manga just does a better job at displaying the power of Metal Bat's swings and impacts. The anime from here on out follows the manga as usual up until we get to the point where Sour Face knocks on Saitama's door, telling him that everybody's waiting for him to come out. Saitama then puts on his wig and looks a lot more excited in the manga compared to the anime. And when the announcer of the Super Fight Tournament is introducing all the fighters, when he finally gets to Saitama, some dialogue is changed from the manga. And when the announcer announces Sirio's introduction, the crowd goes wild. Except for Bakuzan, who is appearing right behind him, who not only wants to beat him in this tournament, but also kill him. The same is said in the manga, but just at a few different angles, and I would say Bakuzan looks a little bit more intimidating. And when Sirio is thinking about fighting the previous tournament winner, aka Garo, we get an anime-only shot of Garo approaching City Q, the city that S-Class hero Watchdog Man resides in. And when tournament contestant Zakos confronts Saitama, insulting him about not knowing how to tie his belt. Sourface decides to help Saitama retie his belt at a weird angle in the anime, which uh, looks like he's doing something else, I'm not gonna lie to you. Zakos then explains to Saitama and Sourface that S-Class hero Bang was supposed to be the chief judge for today's tournament, but withdrew last second so he could put a stop to Garo. And as he said that, Sourface has a surprised look on his face, and in the manga you can actually see Master Bang in the background. It then cuts to a scene of Silver Fang and Bomb scouting over the city in hopes of finding Garo when they notice a class hero Smile Man fighting a demon level monster. Silver Fang then comes in to save the day and helps out Smile Man by defeating the monster relatively quickly. Silver Fang then walks away, leaving the monster's dead corpse on the floor, severely bruised and battered. And compare this fight in the manga, it plays out the same, but we actually see Smile Man getting beaten up and we get a minor flashback from the monster that was cut and some dialogue that was also cut from Smile Man. And from here the anime follows just as the manga does up until we get to the fight between Lightning Max and Lin Lin. Just as Zako, Sourface and Saitama watch on, Saitama questions what a low seed is. And as Sourface explains to Saitama what a low seed is, we do get some anime only shots of Lightning Max being crowned victorious. Saitama then insults Zakos by telling him that he is also a low seed, therefore being a weak opponent. It then cuts to the scene between Zakos and Saitama on stage getting ready to fight in which where Zakos tells him you're so dead with an anime only close up shot of his face. Episode 6 starts off with the introduction of Suryu and we can see that the crowd gets pretty hyped and Suryu gets prepared to fight and take on Lightning Max in which where Suryu begins to take the piss out of Lightning Max and he then charges at Suryu using one of his double kick moves where he swiftly gets taken out by Suryu with one kick. This scene plays out exactly the same in the manga, but we just get added extra anime only shots of the stadium and the audience. We then get an anime only scene of Suryu leaving the stage, which replaced this manga panel with Sour Face and Saitama talking about how amazing Suryu's skills are. We then get the fight between one of the contestants, named Benpatsu, versus A Class Hero Snack, in which was cut pretty short in the anime, but in the manga it's slightly extended. And when Genos leaves the stadium to go annihilate the nearby by monsters that might interrupt the super fight tournament, he calls the hero association so he can get directions on where the other monsters are. This scene plays out exactly the same in the manga, but we just get a few cut lines from one of the hero association staff members. From here, the anime plays out the same just as the manga does, up until we get to the fight between Genos and Face Ripper. And in the fight, Genos quickly takes care of Face Ripper and he even uses a new move called High Voltage Fist, where as in the manga, he actually 
doesn't even say the name of his attack. We then cut back to a scene where Sour Face gets ready to take on Jakuman. And in an anime only scene, we see Sour Face come out on top and be victorious where Jakuman and Sour Face show great sportsmanship. And from here, the anime plays out the same just as the manga does up until we get the scene of the meeting in the Hero Association headquarters where they discuss how Narinki's son Waganma has been kidnapped by the Monster Association. And this is where we get an anime only scene of Jinzurin interrupting the meeting to tell the Hero Association staff that Metal Bat has been found unconscious. And right after Genos defeats Awakened Cockroach, Genos detects a presence coming at him at a high rate of speed. And this is where we get an anime only scene of Genos getting completely obliterated off screen where we just see debris and bits of pieces of him flying into the sky. And from here the anime plays out the same just as the manga does up until we get to an anime only scene of Suryu and Snack staring each other down on stage getting ready to fight each other. This fight plays just a little bit different from the manga. When Snack has his inner monologue he's seen fighting Suryu at the same time. But in the anime, they're kind of just staring each other down. We also get a few cut dialogue from the manga and a couple panels that were also cut. And when Suryu defeats Snack with just one kick, the crowd goes wild, but that panel was cut from the anime. And in this episode's end credit scene, Monster King Orochi asks Giro Giro the status on how the monsters are doing. In which Giro Giro responds that victory is assured for the Monsters Association. We only get a couple extra anime only shots of this scene, but that's about it. Episode 7 starts off with an anime only recap of what just happened in the previous end credit scene. And from here, the anime actually skips through a lot of the S-Class heroes and various other heroes fights, and instead choosing to skip right towards Saitama's fight with Chose, in which where Saitama quickly takes care of him by one punching him off the stage. And just as the announcer crowns Saitama victorious of this match, the anime actually skips over it and cuts a lot of panels in the manga that shows the reactions from a lot of the fighters. Later on, we cut to a scene where the sword master have a meeting deep inside the mountains of G City, where they discuss about hunting the hero hunter himself, Garo. Atomic Samurai asks his fellow swords masters for their assistance in helping him hunt Garo, in which they all agree to, but Haragiri, another sword master in the meeting, reminds the rest of the sword masters that their objective is to improve their skills in the art of swordsmanship, and proceeds to tell the rest of the group that they could become more powerful if they join the monster association and eat monster cells. Haragiri then then transforms into a monster where he then threatens to take all of their lives if they don't consume the monster cells. Atomic Samurai responds to Haragiri by telling him that he has fallen from the way of the sword, but Haragiri was given orders to kill Atomic Samurai anyways. And just as Haragiri is about to quick draw his sword and kill Atomic Samurai, Atomic Samurai is just way too quick and ends up killing Haragiri. Atomic Samurai then steps out of the meeting to go outside and inform all the disciples of the sword masters that their main objective has changed from hunting Garo to instead taking down the Monster Association. This scene was actually changed a lot in the anime because in the manga almost four pages of dialogue between the Swordmaster disciples were cut. And not only that but some dialogue was also cut during the actual meeting. We then cut back to the final match of the Super Fight Tournament between Saitama and Suryu. We get an anime only introduction between the two which just replaced the shot of the announcer in the manga. The actual fight between Saitama and Suryu remains pretty faithful in the anime, but with just a couple shots from the manga being cut of the announcer and of course the audience. We also get some cut dialogue from Suryu explaining why he is starving for something stimulating because he is too strong. We also get some anime only reactions from the rest of the martial arts fighters. And when Suryu kicks Saitama in the head, sending Saitama's wig flying in the air, leaving him exposed as not Chiranko but the B class hero Caped Baldi. This is when we get an anime anime only scene of the ref telling him that they'll find out who he really is afterwards and the fight continues on. But in the manga this plays out just slightly different with not the ref telling him that they'll find out who he is later but with Suryu immediately being crowned victorious. And as the fight continues between the two, Saitama comes to the conclusion that martial arts is really just moves that look really cool. Saitama then has a go at martial arts by spinning around and defeating Suryu with just his hip. Now when you compare this 
entire scene between the fight where Tsuryu starts taking Saitama seriously, we do get some cut content. Just like the staff and the security guard waiting for a moment to step in and stop the fight, a lot of impact frames that weren't in the anime and of course reactions from the fighters and the audience. And right after Tsuryu is defeated, we again anime only scene of Saitama running away from the tournament security. And in this episode's end credit scene, we get an anime only tease of the dragon level monster Goketsu. Episode 8 starts off with Tsuryu being crowned the champion of the 22nd Super Fight Tournament. They also announced that the spectators and audience must remain inside the stadium because of the monsters that are outside. But things quickly go south when the audience realizes that there are monster birds coming in the stadium. The three crows that land in the stadium then surround the heroes and tournament contestants. This is when contestant Benpatsu decides to make a run for it but he is quickly stopped by none other than Goketsu. This is then when Goketsu approaches the fighters and tells them that they'll all become monsters. This introduction scene does change quite a bit. For starters, Lightning Max's dialogue is cut and several other dialogue and panels have been cut. We then get a scene where Snake and Lightning Max stand up to Goketsu where they are quickly taken care of with a single kick. This interaction is only just slightly different in the manga where Lightning Max and Snack are a little bit more disrespectful towards Goketsu. And several other reactions from the fighters in the audience have been cut as well. When the announcer realizes that Goketsu is actually the first champion of the first Super Fight Tournament, he exclaims how he is alive. We then get an extended anime flashback of how Goketsu transformed into a monster and joined the monster association. Goketsu then hands over the group of fighters monster cells and tells them to consume them or they will be killed. We then get an anime only scene where Metal Knight questions the intention of the monster association. We then cut back to a scene where one of the contestants punches Sour Face in the face for some reason. This wasn't in the manga at all. He kind of just pushes him aside. But after he punches him, he then goes in and eats one of the monster cells where he then becomes a really violent monster but Cho steps in and kills him by snapping his neck and in the manga we get a reaction from the fighters and the announcer claiming how Cho's is so strong. We then cut to a scene where three other contestants eat the monster cells and start to monsterize where they gain immense power. In the manga as they're transforming we do get a lot of reactions that were cut from the anime. From here on out the anime is pretty faithful to the manga where Suryu quickly defeats all three monsters and even Cho's. From here the anime is is pretty faithful to the manga even up until the fight with Koketsu and Suryu. Only one thing really changed and that was this panel where Suryu admits that Goketsu is stronger than him. When we get to the scene where Girogiro explains to Monster King Orochi the goals of the Monster Association, a manga panel was cut out where King questions why the sirens are going off. And when Girogiro informs Goketsu to come back to base immediately with the new monsters, Bakuzan refuses to go. He then arrogantly tries to attack Goketsu and this is when Goketsu decides to throw a punch at Bakuzan intentionally missing to show the difference between their power and with just the sheer force of his punch like Saitama he blows a giant hole in the stadium and when you compare this to the manga version the fight is actually a lot longer we get to see Goketsu's martial arts skills in action Suryu then begins to scream and cry out for help in which where Bakuzan tells him that no one will come and save him. Bakuzan then proceeds to raise his foot over Snack. He then stomps his foot on the ground, crushing the ground beneath his foot, only for Saitama to come in last second and save him, where he then puts Snack on the ground and tells Suryu that he heard his cries for help, where he then proceeds to approach Bakuzan, getting ready to take him on. The only real changes to this scene were a couple manga panels that were cut, and we got some small extra anime only scenes during Suryu's monologue about despair. Episode 9 begins where we left off at the end of episode 8 where we see Saitama approaching Bakuzan in which where the fight actually remains pretty faithful to the manga with just maybe a couple anime only shots and some minor changes. Shortly after Saitama defeats Bakuzan, 
Mysterio asks who Saitama really is and why he joined the Super Fight Tournament, in which where Saitama responds that he wanted to experience martial arts and win the prize money. And this is where we get an anime only shots of some ants crawling in the rubble. And I'm not sure what this means, I'm not sure if it's just like an extra shot just to add an extra shot or if this has any kind of significant meaning behind it. And when Suryu warns Saitama about the Monster Association threat and Goketsu, Saitama then goes off into the distance to go find Goketsu. This is where we get some added anime dialogue from Suryu while Saitama is off screen fighting Goketsu. And just as Suryu hears the loud clashing in the distance between Saitama and Goketsu, Goketsu's severed head starts flying towards the stage onto the stadium in front of Suryu. We then cut to the fight between Piri Piri Prisoner and, and the demon level monster Free Hugger, in which where Piri Piri Prisoner crushes Free Hugger to death by using a special move, Angel Hug, where he then celebrates his victory by raising his hands up and letting out a victory scream. This is when he then gets interrupted by a phone call where they let him know that all of his quote unquote honeys in prison have been taken by monsters. We then get Saitama running past the dead corpse of Free Hugger, which was cut in the anime. Saitama then meets an incapacitated C class hero in which where Saitama asks him where the monsters are. And because Saitama can't find any monsters, he then goes into a deep emotional inner monologue about him not being able to make a name for himself, but then he reminds himself that this was never about making a name for himself, but instead to be able to feel something. Where we then see him walking into the city, which was also cut from the anime. We then get a scene between King and Saitama, where we get an apparel change in the anime because in the manga he was wearing a flannel shirt, but in the anime he's just wearing a green shirt. We then get a scene where King and Saitama have a bro talk, where Saitama explains to King that he's emotionally numb. King then tries to cheer up Saitama by giving him a speech that he read in a manga, and after King's long speech, King invites him over to play some video games. This entire scene was pretty faithful to the manga with only just a couple panel shots that were cut. We then get a scene of Sonic training in the woods, where he throws multiple kunais and stars at pictures of Saitama's head, where he is then suddenly confronted by two members of the ninja village, Gelwind and Hellfire Flame. Gelwind and Hellfire Flame insult Sonic by telling him that he's living the petty life of an assassin, which was cut from the anime, where they then try to recruit Sonic into the Monster Association. They also tell Sonic that there are not a lot of monsters in the Monster Association that are as fast as them, which was cut from the anime. We then get a scene of the Hero Association is on the trail of a tiger level monster, Marshall Gorilla. This is when the Hero Association sends out three heroes to surround the gorilla, where they are then stopped by S-Class Hero Zombie Man, where he then has an interaction with the heroes telling him that he will be able to handle this on his own. This was cut from the anime and replaced with a scene with Zombie Man calling the Hero Association, telling him not to send any heroes, as it would be a waste of resources. We then get a scene with Bang and Bomb on top of a building scouting for Garo, where Bomb asks Bang if, if perhaps maybe Garo has already been defeated by a hero or monster, in which where Bang replies to him saying that he did not raise Garo to be so weak, so it's not possible that he had already been defeated, and that's why he must take the responsibility of defeating Garo himself. In this scene, we get a couple anime only shots, and we also get some dialogue from the manga that was removed. Episode 10 begins with an anime only scene of Saitama trash talking King, where King then proceeds to, to whoop Saitama's ass in the video game, in which where Saitama ends up raging and calls the game shit. And in the manga, you actually get a whole different point of view from this, where we can see the characters fighting in 3D, but in the anime, it just shows them playing the game on the TV in 2D. Not only that, but in the anime, it shows Saitama getting KO'd multiple times, which would just end up leading Saitama to rage. What a true gamer. We then cut to another anime only scene where Saitama questions a strange device that's on the floor, where he then picks it up and asks King what this device is. King tells him that that device is used for when heroes need backup and shows their location. Saitama then questions why he didn't get one. King tells him that he probably didn't get one because they figured that he'd have too much trouble using it with the buttons and all. This comment made Saitama annoyed in which he responds to King telling him that they're going to have a rematch. From here the anime continues pretty faithfully just as the manga does up until we get to the scene with Dr. Kuseno and Genos in which Genos receives his new upgrades that Dr. Kuseno made for him. This is where we get a couple of anime only close up shots of Genos' new armor. We also get a couple of new shots of Dr. Kuseno telling Genos to take it easy and telling him that it's okay to lose. From here we get a nice transition into 
to a newspaper that's been released informing the civilians that the Hero Association was infiltrated by a monster and they killed an executive as well. And from here we get a lot of reactions to the news in the newspaper from the civilians that were cut from the anime. We then cut to a scene of Terio and his friends talking about how someone is sleeping in their secret base. This is when they all then decide to send Terio into their secret base in order to drive the person sleeping out. This scene plays out exactly the same in the manga with the only real change being that one of Terio's friends shirts was changed from a flannel shirt to just a green shirt. We then get another anime only scene of Garo sleeping on the couch in the secret base where he is then interrupted by Taro sneaking up on him. Taro is then shocked to see that it is Garo where he then explains himself to him and just as he's crying and explaining himself to him we cut to a scene of Terio's friends outside wondering if Tario got himself killed which was some dialogue that was actually cut from the anime. We then see eight heroes approaching right behind the boys telling them to step back as it is dangerous here. We also get some cut interactions between Stinger and of course Tadio's friends and there's also some more cut dialogue that wasn't in the anime which was between the heroes. Smile Man also says that he can sense Garo inside the shack which was cut from the anime. We also get a panel that was removed from the anime where they say that it's impossible for Garo to still be moving. Garo then senses that he is surrounded and asks Tadio for the hero catalog. Garo then pokes a hole into the wall so he could scout and read all about the heroes surrounding him. And as Garo looks out the peephole he made, we get the title cards for all of the heroes surrounding him. In the manga, the same happens but we get a lot of crucial information about the heroes as the title card introduces all the heroes. Garo seen speed reading all of the information about the heroes in the catalog. And as Death Gatling shoots in the air and demands for Garo to step out of the shack, Garo then throws the book on the floor and tells Terio to get down. And just a minor change in the anime, he actually doesn't throw the book down, but gently gives it to Terio. And as Garo has some back and forth talk with the heroes, Terio looks on in awe at the sight of the heroes, where he then wonders if he could get an autograph, which was cut from the anime. Death Gatling then tells Garo that he will be captured alive and be brought to the Hero Association and interrogate him. This is when Garo takes the defensive and jumps on top of the shack and begins to yell out that they will put him over 100 kills. In the manga, we don't get the scene of him yelling. Instead, we get a menacing shot of Garo looking down on the heroes. This is when the fight begins, with the anime giving this fight a little bit of extra love. And with the episode ending with an anime-only 360 shot of the heroes surrounding Garo and a close-up of Garo's face. Episode 11 begins with the heroes surrounding Garo. This is when Death Gatling lets Garo know that he's gathered the best of the best just to hunt down Garo and let Letting Garo know that he might as well just surrender now. This is when Garo tells Death Gatling that the best of the best are not here and that the best are the S Class. This is when Death Gatling goes on on a rant about the S Class and why they are treated so special compared to the rest. Followed by some flashbacks of Flashy Flash and Tatsumaki fighting some monsters. Compare this to the manga, you don't get flashbacks, but instead you get a cool panel of just a close up shot of Flashy Flash and Tatsumaki hitting some of their poses. Not only that, but in the anime, they show a couple extra extra close-up shots of the heroes and Terio peeking through the door. Garo then suddenly starts to feel the effects of the poison arrows that were shot by one of the heroes. And in the anime, they show this by getting an anime-only POV of Garo getting dizzy and nauseous. From here, he continues to fight all eight heroes where he quickly takes out four of the eight remaining heroes. This is when then Small Man tells Death Gatling that they should not be taking Garo alive, but instead kill him. And in the anime, they really make this situation more serious and dire. You can really see the bloodlust here to kill and end Garo. Not only that, but most of the inner monologue that a lot of the heroes had while fighting Garo was replaced in the anime with the B-class hero Glasses instead saying the lines. And when Garo's chasing after Glasses, we get an anime-only flashback in which where we find out that Glasses actually used to be in Fubuki's faction, the Blizzard group. We see in the flashback that the Blizzard group has been defeated by some kind of monster which left Glasses standing all alone. And just as the monster is about to finish off glasses. Saitama comes in last second and punches the monster. This is when Glasses breaks down crying, telling himself that he can't be a hero and that he is at his limit. Saitama turns around and tells him that who decides what his limit is. And this is when Glasses is inspired and decides to be just like Saitama. And after Garo defeats all seven heroes, that leaves Death Gatling remaining, where we see him use his trump card move, Death Shower. We then see Garo deflecting all the bullets from Death Gatling's Death Shower, in which where Death Gatling 
Gatling uses his entire clip and runs out of ammo. After this, we get an anime only shot of Terio frighteningly standing behind the shack that has been torn to shreds by Death Gatling's death shower. This is when Death Gatling goes on a tangent about how he was able to corner the hero hunter and that the S class are no better than him, where we get an anime only line of Garo telling him that he has issues. And in a fit of rage, Death Gatling rushes Garo with the knife, where Garo quickly ends him with a single punch. Tario then approaches Garo very frighteningly, where Garo actually scares him off. And just as a very frail Garo walks away from the scene in need of water, Genos arrives to the scene. And in the anime, they add just a little bit of extra love to Genos' introduction, with some extra close-up shots. And just as Genos and Garo begin to fight, we cut to a scene where King and Daitama are playing a video game, in which where Saitama is getting his ass whooped 81-0 to zero by King. In the anime, we just get some few extra close-up shots of the video game and Saitama raging. King then gets a distress signal on his communication device, which we know that it was glasses, but King tells him that another S-Class hero, aka Genos, is already heading towards the emergency. King then asks Saitama a question as to why there are a lot of monsters near his place. This is when Saitama then tells King that he'll have Genos take care of it, as to where King questions to where even is Genos. This is when they both realize that Genos could have easily been defeated any day now because of the monster association threat, and this is when they both head out to that location of the distress signal. And when you compare this scene to the anime, you get a lot of extra shots of the city and of course Genos himself. We then get an anime only POV shot of Glasses looking at Genos and Garo have a standoff. From here the anime is pretty faithful to the manga, up until we get a standoff between Bang and Garo, where we are shown an anime only flashback of a young Garo arriving to Bang's dojo for the first time, where Bang quickly accepts him as a student. Episode 12 begins with the fight between Garo and Bang, in which Garo is beaten severely, to the point where he thinks he's actually dying and ends up making a run for it. This is when Garo decides to use Death Gatling's body to use as a human shield, but before he could even get to it, Bomb steps in and kicks him in the face towards a monster, which ends up killing the monster. But in the manga, this was changed just a bit because he was not actually kicked into a monster, but just into a pool of blood. This is where we cut to a scene of Phoenix Man looking over the battle in the sky, in which where he says that he needs Garo to stay alive, but with Genos and Bang being there, the situation seems hopeless. In the anime, the scene plays out the exact same way, with just a few extra shots of Bang and Garo. And as Garo is getting ganged up on by Bang and Bomb, he gets a flashback of his childhood where we see his motives behind the reason why he's a hero hunter. The flashback also does get extended in the anime, and just as the flashback ends, we get some extra shots of Garo's face and Bang, Bomb, and Genos. And just as Bang and Bomb are about to deliver the final blow onto Garo, Garo yells at the top of his lungs, saying that it won't end here, and uses both of his fists to smash the ground beneath him, where he then grabs a tree and swings it towards Bang and Bomb. In the anime, this was cut to not him grabbing a tree and swinging it towards Bang and Bomb, but instead it was just Garo yelling, kinda like he was going Super Saiyan. This is when Phoenix Man interrupts the fight where he then uses his wings to blow away both Bang and Bomb. And as Phoenix Man grabs a hold of Garo and takes him into the sky, we get a POV anime only shot of Genos locking on to both Phoenix Man and Garo. Genos then shoots his spiral incineration cannon towards both of them before Phoenix Man could cry out to help. This is when then Elder Centipede rips the ground beneath him and flies up towards the spiral incineration cannon where he blocks the shot. We then get a reaction from all three heroes looking surprised and in awe at what they're seeing, in which where Bomb actually questions what even is that. And when you compare this to the anime, they seem a lot more calm than in awe and surprise. We then get a scene of Phoenix Man explaining to Garo that Genos, Bang, and Bomb pose no threat to Elder Centipede. And in the anime, this is followed up with some anime-only shots of the three standing off. Elder Centipede then charges towards the three, where Bang and Bomb both tell Genos to launch an attack, which wasn't in the manga. Genos shoots some incineration cannons at Elder Centipede's eyes to temporarily blind the monster. This is when Genos switches out with Bang and Bomb, where they both combine their fists and use a very powerful technique called Roaring Aura Sky Ripping Fist. This is when Genos has an amazed reaction at seeing their technique, where he gets a flashback and says that this is the pinnacle of skill, which wasn't in the anime. They end up cracking and destroying the exoskeleton of Elder Centipede, but Elder Centipede quickly launches a counter attack at both Bang and Bomb. This counter attack performed by Elder Centipede send both Bang and Bomb flying into a tree, but instead of sending them both flying into a tree, in the anime Genos just catches them both. Shortly after being caught by Genos, in which where Bomb 
Tom says that the technique they just used on Elder Centipede will shatter him into a million pieces. And as we see Elder Centipede being shattered into a million pieces, debris of his exoskeleton starts flying everywhere and towards the three where both Bang and Bomb deflect him pretty easily which wasn't shown in the anime. The technique both Bang and Bomb used however did nothing to Elder Centipede but instead helped Elder Centipede mold. And in classic Geno's fashion this is where he decides to be rash and instead go one on one with Elder Centipede. And as he's fighting Elder Centipede, he ends up being sliced in half, where he ends up connecting both of his bodies and uses a move called Jet Arrow Drive, where he quite literally drives himself onto one of the teeth of Elder Centipede and into his mouth. This is where we get an anime only insult by Elder Centipede, and just as Genos is inside of Elder Centipede, Elder Centipede then uses his digestive fluid to melt Genos. This is when Genos then counters that by unleashing his ultra special incineration cannon. But to no avail, it did not defeat Elder Centipede. This is when Bang saves Genos and carries him while running away, along with Bomb carrying the other eight heroes that fought Garo earlier. And as they're running away, they're realizing that they're actually heading towards the city. And to prevent casualties, this is when Bang decides that he will go all out for the last time. Bang takes off his shirt, and we get an anime only scene of him actually taking it off, and we see Bang preparing to go all out for the last time. And in an anime only scene, we see King building up courage and getting flashbacks of Saitama. King then tries to lure Elder Centipede towards him, saying that he has brought Blast so they could have a rematch. Elder Centipede then turns his attention towards King, where he then violently starts rushing towards him. And just as Elder Centipede starts getting closer and closer towards King, in a panic, King questions where Saitama is at. This is when we then see Saitama appear right behind King, charging up his serious punch, where he then proceeds to one shot Elder Centipede. Now, in the anime, it doesn't say that this was actually a serious punch. Why this change was made, I don't know why, but either way, the manga says it was a serious punch. But shortly after one shotting Elder Centipede, we get a surprised reaction from Genos with his messed up hair. But in the anime, his hair doesn't look really messed up. And just as King and Saitama are walking towards the three, Genos approaches Saitama and asks Saitama what he's missing. Saitama then confusingly replies with power. This is when Genos then proceeds to write it in his notebook, which wasn't in the anime, but instead we get an extra reaction from King, telling Genos that he shouldn't be using Saitama as a reference. The episode then ends with an anime only line where Saitama tells Genos if he just wants to head home. So that was all the differences between the anime and the manga. Okay, almost all of them, but I just wanted to point out the ones that I really felt were worth mentioning. But hey, hopefully season 3 drops sometime soon because I really want to make a differences video on that one as well. Well, but only one can wish right so be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so that way i can keep pumping out more one punch man content for you guys and before you head out make sure you read the description for more information about the channel and so you can join the one punch man community i'm amir punch see ya